hope you're well in all your ways your majesties and you're loving your servant others like always all right um we will talk about what is happening the state that the continent is right now it's not news to you anymore uh from the short i posted i know a lot of you have an idea what is going on um the whole sahel is something big is happening there and um happening there not just there because it involves the whole continent we are all involved in this thing but where the trick is your majesty you know these people when i say these people i'm not hiding it. the white people the europeans the americans all right they have this whole tactics of dividing and conquering all right and they've been doing this for a whole a long time that by now our leaders our people should have been aware should be looking should have been aware of what this the plans of these people are but the painful thing is even up until now as old as we are as a nation as a continent we have still not learned our lessons that is a painful thing right now and it pains me to the heart your majesty is that if care is not taken um these people will use us against us the whole attention of the world is drawn to niger because they have been given seven days to return the office back to the former leadership of course the military took over and um i'm going to be sharing some things with you some clips with you as we progress in this video why the military took over and why is it that the military took over the government and the citizens are happy with the military um the west the West is pushing the president of Nigeria to take action, claiming that since he is the president of um, ECOWAS, so he should be the one to take action. And they keep pressurizing him, pressurizing him. And there's something with him that I don't know if other people have noticed. There's something with, there's something with the president of Nigeria. He always comes out and makes statements without even consulting his cabinet. There are lots of statements he make that later on he have to reverse it because he come out and talk. He don't care whether what he say have so so, so effect on the people. Now he went out after they pressurized him because of course they were the one that formed his election. His him being in that office, we all know that he is not there because people want him to be there. He forced his way into that office. All right. Now after being pressurized by those who founded him his election he just came out and made the statements all right giving seven days to um the, the 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 military in niger to return the power back to the former leader now the citizens the nigerians are happy with those who took over this leadership with the military who took over this leadership because they were they are fed up they are tired of the government and not just in Niger, both in Mali, Burkina Faso, is the same thing. The people are tired and they support the military. You get the point. You see where this whole thing is heading to. This is from the agitation, from the pain of the citizens. No, we do not want you anymore. We have everything, but we still suffer. We have mineral resources, but we still suffer. And do you know why your majesty is? Because our leaders are puppets. I have been saying this here. Our leaders are puppets. For the West. Now, France themselves are in shock. The French government are in shock to see that almost all their colonies are being are pulling out of their hold right before their eyes, and it's like a dream to them. So they can do anything to, you know, turn us against each other so that they can come back and conquer. And if there is any war right now in the continent, we are the ones that lose. These are the things that a lot of Africans don't know. A lot of our leaders don't know. I don't know if the president of Nigeria is aware of this. Because if there is a war, we will be struggling to see how we, we, we get ammunition. All right? And at the process, we sell our resources at cheaper rate to these people so we can get ammunition from them. The EU has suspended all security cooperation with Niger after the country's army took power in a coup. EU foreign policy chief Joseph Boré joined the U.S. and France in refusing to recognize the coup leaders and said security cooperation and budgetary aid was being suspended indefinitely. It comes shortly after the U.S. declared its unflagging support for ousted President Mohamed Bazoum as seen as a key Western ally in the fight against Islamist 
Islamist militants. Now, the head of the Presidential Guards Unit General, Abdurrahmane Chiani, uh, delivered, rather declared himself Niger's new leader, saying he was driven by insecurity, economic woes, and corruption to seize power. On the continuation of the democratic governance and constitutional order that has been disrupted uh, by uh, the actions in the last uh, in the last few days, so uh, that assistance, that support, is in clear jeopardy as a result of these actions, which is another reason why they need to be immediately reversed. Uh, with regard to our embassy, of course, we're always focused on the security of our uh, embassy, of our personnel. Um, we released a security alert that uh, advises U.S. citizens to limit any unnecessary movements to avoid the affected area until further notice as this uh, situation develops. And it escalates as Niger's new military leaders have reportedly suspended, get this, all exports of uranium and gold to France, which relies on resources very, very heavily from the West African country. Let's uh, shed some light on this with RT contributor Rachel Master. Where would the coup leaders in Niger possibly get the idea that France had any interest whatsoever in intervening in its former colony? Well, it might have something to do with a statement that was put out by the French presidential palace, the Élysée, on Sunday that read, quote, anyone attacking French nationals, the army, diplomats and interests would see France respond immediately and intractably. And by French nationals, they mostly just mean one guy named Mr. Uranium, because Niger is France's top supplier of it, providing 15% of its total supply and a fifth of the European Union's. And the mineral is absolutely critical to power France's nuclear reactors. You see, France's energy independence is ironically very dependent on Niger, which would explain why French President Emmanuel Macron sounded awfully angry about something happening a whole continent away. Anyone attacking French nationals, the army, diplomats, and rights of way would see France respond immediately and intractably. The president of the republic will not tolerate any attack against France and its interests. Yeah, those French interests would certainly include uranium. And now we've been hearing multiple Western press reports that the military junta, now in charge, has cut off exports of both uranium and gold to France, and that comes as really bad timing for Paris, which has become even more reliant on its nuclear power plants after cutting itself off from Russian gas with the rest of the EU to impress Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky, and kind of the same way that college party guys work themselves into a frenzy and do dumb things like jump off a roof to impress girls. Germany is already on the verge of deindustrializing because Europe's economic engine can't run on wind and sun. Who knew? Apparently not Berlin. But at least France had not completely bought into Berlin's green fantasies and mothballed all their nuclear power plants, although Macron was certainly heading in that direction. So plan B after the Russian gas cut off was to power them back up. But now Niger has suspended the export of the uranium that they require with the immediate effect. You can all see Niger, you can see the neighbors of Niger, you can see Algeria, Libya, Mali, Burkina Faso, Benin, <clears throat> Nigeria, Chad. Those are the neighboring countries surrounding uh, Niger, okay? So let's talk about ECOWAS. Now you see the, uh, the member states of ECOWAS, Benin, uh, Burkina Faso, Cape Verde, uh, Côte d'Ivoire, the Gambia, Ghana, Guinea, uh, Guinea-Bissau, Liberia, Mali, Niger, Nigeria, Senegal, Sierra Leone, and Tobi. You can see now that uh, Mali and Burkina Faso have officially announced that they will declare war if Western controlled ECOWAS nations invade Niger. Now, the ECOWAS nations, but the ECOWAS nations are threatening to declare war on Niger, right? This is it. Now, this is from the president of Guinea. Guinea is willing to join uh, Burkina Faso and Mali, I think even Algeria. So they will all come together to declare war on any ECOWAS nation that is willing to invade Niger, right? Even the French nation. This is it. Now, the president of Ghana, as you can see here, uh, has decided not to join ECOWAS in case they have to invade uh, Niger. We have the president of Ghana, Togo, Liberia, Guinea-Bissau, Senegal. All of these presidents are all against joining ECOWAS. Okay. Nana Kufu of Ghana, alongside the presidents of Togo, Ghana, uh, Liberia, Guinea-Bissau, Senegal, they think that th there's another way they could solve this issue instead of using ECOWAS to, to attack uh, Niger. So they are not part of it. Okay. So 
Tinubu, Bola Ahmed Tinubu of Nigeria is one of those leaders that is actually pushing for ECOWAS to, to attack Niger and reinstate the former or the deposed president of, of Niger. Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Let, let's go back to this. So the easiest way out now is for France to use ECOWAS. And we know not all ECOWAS states, Ghana, Togo and the rest are not for this. So Tinubu is one of those people in the ECOWAS region fighting for this to happen. So let's look how strategic uh, Niger is right now. Niger is very important because if Niger is stable, the stability of Niger guarantees stability in Libya, Algeria, Mali, Burkina Faso, Nigeria, and Chad. Now you think about the Gulf, the Gulf of the Guinea, the Gulf of Guinea, and then the Sahel. You know what has been happening there. So France has a total of 118,600 troops stationed in Niger. The U.S. is also found in Niger. They have their troops stationed in Niger. Still yet, there is no peace in that area. They will tell you they are there to fight Islamic uh, extremists. Now, with all their troops in the in the Sahel, you still wonder why Boko Haram is terrorizing that area. We have Chad, we have uh, Cameroon, Nigeria, Mali. These are areas where Boko Haram has found its, its space. So change was inevitable in Niger. It was just a matter of time. Looking at what is happening in Mali, Burkina Faso, Guinea Conakry, it was just a matter of time because Niger needs peace. And when Niger has its peace, most of the countries in the Sahel Yes, including Cameroon. Cameroon also has this Boko Haram issue. So we look at Niger having perfect peace and stability. Boko Haram would not find its place unless they all run and go and hide in Nigeria. Chad also won't stand for this, okay? Chad also won't stand for this. So Niger needs peace. Boko Haram won't find its place anywhere if Niger has that peace. So Niger right now has to take the bull by the horn like they are doing and fight to the end until they get peace. We all look at military coup as being very destructive, but look at what uh, Gaddafi did when he became the leader through a military coup. Look at what Thomas Sankara did when he became a leader through the military coup. Look at what the president of Guinea, um, Conakry, Mali, Burkina Faso, look at what they are doing. So I stand with the people of Niger, and if they're in support 100% of this, these leaders right now, then I stand with them and I support them, because if Niger has peace, then it's, it's, it's stability to the whole of that region. Okay, that's it for me. Anyway, your majesties, you've heard all that, you've seen all that, and the truth still remains that the West is playing something underneath. And if we are not wise as the African people, if we are not wise as the African people to unite, to love ourselves and the rest of them, we will destroy ourselves with our hands, all right? Because that is what they really want, dividing and having opportunity to conquer. All right, I will see you in my next one. Do leave your comment there at the section. I love yourself, love others. Stay safe, stay positive, always your majesties. Bye for now.